The old shaper has a bunch of these old square head fasteners and the screw. And I want to make a handle for this. This is the elevating screw for the table. And these are nominally half an inch. It's like it's about seven, eight thousandths under. There are also a whole bunch that are nominally three eighths. And if I can make one tool that'll do both, that'll be really nice. And so what I've got is some unknown mystery steel and a breaker bar that somehow I broke. I don't know how. But the handle on this is pretty nice, so I think I'll use that and then put a square hole in this. The classic way to do this is to make a joke about square drill bits and then drill a round hole and file it. But because I need this to be about this long, I'm going to do it a little bit differently. If you look closely at these things, you'll notice that the corners are broken pretty aggressively, so we don't actually need to make a perfect square to fit on that. With a blind hole like this, the classic way to do it would be to use a rotary brooch. But I don't have one of those, so I'm going to do this by drilling a series of holes in it. I've got this on the mill, pretty well centered up. I'm going to start out by drilling out all four corners on this with a really small drill bit. This is a 764, about 2.75 millimeters. Each of these holes is about 600 thousandths deep, so about a 6 to 1 ratio on the depth to diameter. So it's just a lot of pecking, a lot of chip clearing. The outsides of these holes should be on a half inch square. Yeah, it looks like they are. And now I'm just going to knock the middle out of it. And now I'm just going to use a quarter inch end mill to clean it up the rest of the way. Test fit says it's not quite there yet. Real close though. I opened that up a little bit more and now it fits. It's just, fits a little too well. And it still doesn't fit this one. So I think I'm gonna spend some time with some files, get that to fit. Took about two minutes worth of filing. Now it fits very nicely in all the positions. This one, on the other hand, was much more of a fight because it turns out this one was about 10 thousandths oversized. And to complicate matters even more, this thing is really hard. So I did what I think any of us would do, which is put it in the spindexer, knock some off on the surface grinder, chamfer those corners over, and now that's a really nice fit. I got the handle cut off and I want to put the 3 8 square in the end here. But before I do that, I think I've learned my lesson. Looks like the biggest one is about 385, so we'll go a little bit bigger than that. Same routine once again, start at the corners, work in. This method really is a compromise between trying to get the radius on the corners as small as possible versus leaving material where the holes overlap. These are just sizes that I've found work fairly well for it. This little ER20 collet chuck has saved me quite a few times when I run out of room. But sometimes it's still tricky to get it in there with a drill bit in it. I spent a lot longer with these riffler files getting the corners knocked out of that thing, but it's pretty well riffled now. There's kind of an amazing amount of variation between all these fasteners. This one it's really tight, this one it drops right on.
if I can keep this thing at the proper angle, you'll never see how badly off-centered this slot is. And the set screw is going to thread through both sides of it. It should help keep it together pretty well. Loctite on there to keep that in there. Yeah, it's still going to work. I ended up doing a little bit more filing than I hoped I would on this, but in the end, that should be a pretty good handle for this. I think that works pretty well. As always, thanks for watching.